Welcome to Marked Faith. I am PJ Oliveira, and I'm so happy to be here with you and welcome you to this amazing time where you're going to be taught the Word of God and your life will never be the same. Welcome to Marked Faith. Why Marked Faith? Because we believe you were marked. You are distinguished. According to Ephesians 1.13, when we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were sealed. We were marked, according to NIV version, by the Holy Spirit. And that mark distinguished us from everybody and from everything. And that mark is called the favor of God, a marked faith, a godly faith. Not a natural faith, a godly faith that will cause you to live a victorious life. Welcome. We're here to be a blessing to you. This is what this program is all about. You're going to see us for the first time, but this is not going to be the last time. We're going to be together a lot. And I have some good stuff that God has done in our lives and some good words, some good revelation that I want to share with you. And your life will never be the same. And I want to right now, I don't want to waste any, any time. I want to right now invite you to come to the service where I'm teaching the word of God. And I'm going to talk about rebound faith. Yeah, that's right. Rebound faith. Faith, and that word will touch your life, will bless your life, and you will never be the same. Stay right there. Let's go to the service where I'm preaching, and I will be back right after. So the title of my message today is Rebound Faith. Say this with me. Rebound Faith. Now, I want everybody to participate. Rebound Faith. First John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 from the King James Version says this, verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God, or is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith, the Passion Translation says this, You see, every child of God overcomes the world. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. You see, verse 5 asks the question, who are the world, the world conquerors, defeating its power? Who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Every child of God? No. It should be every child of God, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not every child of God. But those that are Believing in Jesus, those that believe in Jesus and have faith in his word. Yes. That's the difference. It's not every child of God that has the power to overcome the world, but those that are using their faith, those that believe in Jesus and believe in his word. Because Jesus and the word are the same, according to John chapter 1. So who are the ones defeating its power? Every child of God. Unfortunately, it's not every child of God, but the ones that are using their faith. Are you with me so far? Amen. I want you to see this. Every child of God can overcome and should overcome the world, but the ones conquering and defeating the world are the ones that are exercising their faith. Mm. Question, is that you today? Yes. Amen. <laughs> see, it's not enough just to be the child of God. You have to have faith and you have to have the word in you. It's not enough just to be the child of God. You have to have the word in you, and you have to have faith in that word, and you have to apply that word and that faith in your life. Amen. Yes. Sonship alone, it's not enough. You have to have faith. Amen. You have to have faith. The problem with Christianity today is that we see people that they, they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they think it's over. That's just the beginning. Amen. You're just getting started. Yeah. When you receive Jesus, it's not the end of it. It's the beginning. Yep. 
It's the beginning. You're already saved because you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now you're in, but now there's a life to be lived, and that life can only be a victorious life if you live by faith. Amen. 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 You live by faith. John 15 verse 7 says this from the New King James Version says this, If you abide in me, look what Jesus is saying, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Yeah. You see, I want you to see that there is a condition here. Yep. Mm -hmm. There is a condition. If you abide in me and if my words are in you, you see, just being the son of God, it's not enough to be victorious in this world. You will go to heaven, you're saved, but that doesn't mean that you're going to live a victorious life because I know a lot of Christians that are saved, but they're living a miserable life. Come on, somebody. We see some people that they say, come and they receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so you can be like me. I don't want to be like you. Excuse me. I'm fine the way I am right now. Some people, they're so miserable, they're so negative, that they say, you know, come so you can be like me. I don't want to be like you. I want to be like the ones that are winning. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Hello, I'm the only one that likes to win in this place? <laughs> Maybe because I'm Brazilian and play soccer, so I'm very competitive. <laughs> We're supposed to win. Amen. We're supposed to have a victorious life. Yes. Amen. Who are the, the, the world conquerors defeating its power? Those that believe. Yes. 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 Those that believe. Amen. You see, that's not saying those that, those that were born again. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. It's not saying those that were born again, because if it was just about being born again, wouldn't say about belief. It was talking about being born again, but it's talking about those who believe in Jesus, those who have faith in Jesus. Those are the ones that are defeating yes. Amen. the world and the devil. When it's talking about the world, it's talking about the world system. Yes. And Jesus is saying, if you abide in me, so now you got saved. Now you have the word in you. You can ask whatever you want. See, it's not even talking about needs, it's talking about desires. Because if you have the word in you, you know how to pray. If you have the word in you, you know that your desire is God's desire or God's will for your life because you're in such a relationship with God that you want the same thing. Amen. You know how to pray. You don't have to even think, my God, is the will of God for me to buy this, this car? Is the will of God for me to get a better job? Is the will of God for me to get a, a, a better house? Is the will of God for me to prosper? No, you know what's the will of God for you because you're in a relationship with him. You know his heart and you know that your desires are his desires for you. Because when you have the word, you know how to pray. Yes. Amen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask for whatever you want. And maybe if I don't have anything else to do, I'll give it to you. Is that what your Bible says? No. And you shall have it. Amen. Yes. And you will have it. Amen. But you have to have the word. You have to have faith and you have to apply the word. Yes. You have to apply the word. The Bible says that we need to be doers of the word, not triers. There's a lot of people frustrated in church today. There's a lot of people that came to church, gave their lives to Jesus, and they don't go to church anymore. You know why? Because they try. They try church. They try Jesus. They tried religion. And this is not about religion. This is about relationship with Jesus and getting his word and exercising your faith and increasing in your knowledge of the word of God, applying that knowledge and that word in your life and now seeing divine results. Amen. Amen. But because people come here to try and they don't see the results because they're just trying, they go home. Yeah, yeah I tried. It didn't really work. That's the problem because you tried. If you do, it will work. Yeah. It's not about you working. It's about you putting the word to work. Amen. You make your faith work for you. Amen. And you rest on that faith. Yeah. And you rest on your position. Yeah. And you rest on God's goodness. Yeah. You rest on his faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You put your faith to work. Yeah, good. You put the word to work. Amen. But you can only do that if you know what's in you. If you have the word in you. 
Tell your neighbor this, be a doer, not a trier. Be a doer, not a trier. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, verse 38, from the New King James Version says this, Now, watch this, Now, the just shall live by faith. When? Now. Now, now say it again. When? Now. Oh, not tomorrow. No. Not in 10 years from now. No. Not when things go wrong. Now. No, now. No. The just, it's talking about you and me, the righteous ones, shall live by faith. No. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Pastor translation says this, and he also says, my righteous ones will live from my faith. But if the fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them, is not happy with them. Now the just, now, not tomorrow, not in 10 years from now, not when you need the most because you're so desperate, then you try to apply faith because everything else you tried didn't work. No, now the just shall live by faith. Because faith is not for tomorrow, faith is now. Yeah. Faith is not going to be, faith is now. Hebrews 11 says that now faith is. Faith is not going to be, faith is right now. Yes. That's why the Bible says now you shall live by faith. And it's not talking about you after you died, because after you're dead, you don't need faith. <laughs> it's not for when you go to heaven. That's right. Yes. It's right now. Because when you go to heaven, Jesus is not going to be preaching to you try to increase your faith. Amen. You don't need the blessing when you go to heaven. You don't need favor when you go to heaven. Because you're not going to have pill, you're not going to have bills to pay when you go to heaven. So Jesus said, "All right, so this is the first of the month." <laughs> We're here to collect. Our no, you don't need the blessing. You don't need favor. You don't need prosperity when you go to heaven. This is for now. Life is now. We're going to go to heaven, yes. But before we get there, there is a life to be lived. And the Bible says that our faith is the victorious power that will cause us to live a triumphant life here. Yes. Amen. 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 You shall live. This word shall in, the, in your original says you must live by faith. You have to live by faith. We have to make a decision that we, we need to trust God and his word more than our own words. Yes. You need to trust God more than a government. You need to trust God more than a, the report from the doctor. Yes. You need to trust God more than the lawyer. You have to put this word as priority. We shall live by faith. Live by faith. Live by faith. Walk by faith. Are you with me? That's how you're going to see godly results in your life. You have to make, listen to me, you have to make a natural decision to experience a supernatural result. Amen. What's the natural decision? You make a decision to trust God. Yes. That's a natural decision. Yes. Because if you think God is going to give you supernatural faith, it's not going to happen. Sorry. Sorry for giving you bad news right now. It's not going to happen if that's what you're believing God for. He's not going to give you supernatural faith because the faith that you need, he already gave you. Amen. Romans 12, 3, that he says that he gave us all the same measure of faith. Now you have to exercise that faith and keep hearing the word so your faith can increase. You have to stick to the word. So you have to make a natural decision to trust God so you now can experience supernatural results. You have to stick to that decision and say, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I'm not going to be moved by what I feel. I'm not going to be moved by what people told me it's going to happen. I don't care what happened in the past. I don't care what we're going through right now. Because if you stick to this word, your life will change. You will win. 
And when I tell you that you should live by faith, I'm not telling you that you're not, you're gonna, you're not gonna live with, with problems and difficulties. You will see problems and you will see difficulties and sometimes even greater, even greater than before you gave your life to Jesus. But let me tell you something, when you come to this church, when you come to the Word of God and you start embracing this faith and you start embracing this lifestyle of walking by faith, there's no way you're gonna lose. Because if that happens, God is a liar. So you put that word to work. Are you with me? If fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. The opposite of faith is fear. If you're not living by faith, you're living by fear. If you're not living by faith, you're living by fear. You see? You have to have faith in the Word. In, you have to have faith, and you have to have the Word in you. And when you do, and when you do, no matter what comes your way, your faith in God and that Word will cause you to win. Amen. Amen. Will cause you to win. If you're still here, say, I'm here, Pastor. I'm here, Pastor. And I'm listening. And I'm listening. Amen. Say this with me. If I have, if I have the word in me, the word in me and, the and the God kind of faith, winning is not a possibility. Winning is not a possibility. Winning is a fact. Winning is a fact. Woo! Are you with me? Amen. If you have the word in you and you have the God kind of faith, winning is not a 50-50. Winning is a fact. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. How many times after you received a word from God, your life went completely the opposite <laughs> of that word. <laughs> Is there anybody here like that? Yeah. You go like, what? I thought it was my season now. Well, let me tell you something. You're not the only one. We're not the only one. I've been there. You've been there. Some of you are there right now. <laughs> yes. But let me tell you something. There's other people in the Word of God that went through the same thing. Yes. And the person I want to talk, to talk to you about today is Joseph. You remember Joseph, right? Yes. Joseph had a dream. He had a dream that he was going to be promoted. He had a dream that he was going to be in charge. He had a dream that he was going to be elevated, but instead, the first thing that happened to him was the opposite of elevation. He went to the pit. And now, I, sometimes I like to just use my imagination and try to get into that person's head. Because you have to remember that Joseph was a regular man, just like you and I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have feelings. Thoughts, went through stuff like we go through. So he was a regular human guy. Yes. Yeah. So I try to get into his head and try to think of, uh, try to imagine what he was thinking when he was going through those horrible times. So I'm thinking that this guy wakes up one day and he's all excited that he's going to be in charge. God is going to elevate him. And he's so, he's so happy that he shares with his brothers. He's so happy that he shares with his parents. But the next thing that happens, he goes to the pit. And I can't imagine that Joseph is probably in the pit saying, God, what's going on? I, th I, I thought I had a godly dream. I, th I thought I heard your voice. 
I know when you speak to me, God, because I have a relationship with you. My father taught me that way. I know your voice, God. And what happened? I thought I heard your voice, and look where I am right now. I thought this was my season. I thought this is now I'm going to be charged. I'm going to get paid more money. I'm going to get a better car. I'm going to get a better house, and everybody's going to respect me. And look where I am. I got fired. The car breaks down. The refrigerator goes bad. The dog is depressed. <laughs> the bird died. <laughs> Everything is going backwards. Everything is wrong. Everything is a problem. You say, God, what's going on? And I believe that Joseph was probably saying, God, I didn't eat garlic pizza last night. I know I heard your voice. It wasn't a crazy dream. But I can't imagine that Joseph probably went, God, what's going on? He thought he was going to be elevated, and what happened to him was completely the opposite of elevation. And I want you to get this. Even though Joseph went to the pit and eventually was sold as a slave, Joseph was marked by God because of who he was. This is what you need to understand. Even though his, his, his life would start going downhill, he went to the pit, he was eventually sold as a slave. I want you to get this. I want you to remember this, that Joseph, even though he, was, he went to the pit and eventually was sold as a slave, he was marked by God because of who he was. Yes. He was Abraham's great-grandson. He was the seed of Abraham just like you and I today are the seed of Abraham because of Jesus according to Galatians 3.29. Hallelujah. So there was a mark on his life. Yes. He was distinguished. He was separated because God had made a promise to his great-grandfather. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your seed after you. And because of you, all the families on the earth will be blessed. Yes. So there was something, there was a, a word that was, that was declared over his generation. Yes. Amen. So he went through a, a hard time. He was sold as a slave. He was sold by his family. He was rejected by his family members. But there was a mark in his life. Yes. Amen. 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 There was a word that was declared over his life. And let me tell you something. Let me talk to you right now. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you have been through. You can even go down for a season. You can be sold by your family. You can be rejected by your brothers. But you cannot stay there for too long because there's something in you that will cause you to come and jump right back up to the place where God called you to be. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know your past, and I don't care because God doesn't care. Not that he doesn't care about your feelings. What I'm saying to you is that what you went through is not greater than God's favor. It's not greater than God's mark in your life. It's not greater than God's word because if he said something, even though you're not where you're supposed to be, let me tell you something. Get ready because favor is going to manifest in your life, and you're going to live every promise that God gave you in Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. What a powerful message. So I want you to get this. It's our faith that will cause us to win. It's our faith that will cause us to be overcomers in this world. It's not every child that is overcome in this world. It's only those that believe, only those that are using their faith. So I want you to, be, I want you to use your faith. I want you to use your faith and know that if you keep the word in you and you keep, you keep your faith in God and you apply this word in your life, you are unstoppable. There's nothing that you're going through right now that can stop you from living your destiny, from living your future. That's awesome. And listen, I have some things that I want to share with you. I want to pray with you. But before I pray with you, I want you to watch this testimony. I want you to see what God is doing here at our church, Marked Faith Fellowship Church. I want you to see, pay attention, listen to this, and I'll be right back to pray with you. I remember the first day that I went to Marked Faith Fellowship Church. I was in a state where I was completely broken, to say the least. And God met me right where I was. Um, the service was amazing. At the end, 
I don't even think he finished asking who wanted prayer. I just got up out of my seat and he spoke so many things into my life. Pastor PJ prayed for me. He empowered me with the word of God because at this church, that's, that's what the base is. It's the word of God and that's what you're gonna get. Uncut, raw, organic. That's what it is. And so a year later, my life is pretty much restored from where it was. I am no longer broken. I am strong. I have faith like never before, and I have bounced back. Oh. I will never forget, we had a very special uh, healing service that day, and something traumatic happened to me to where I lost about 30% of my hearing. I was prayed over and immediately my ears opened up and I have been able to hear things that I have not been able to hear in a very long time. On top of that, I went up for healing in my ears, but I also suffered from diabetic foot pain and I was healed from that too. God is so good. It was just a special bonus. So that was really good and I haven't had any hearing problems or foot pain ever since that day. Don't think about it, just come. God is going to meet you exactly where you are. Come with expectancy and come with just open ears, open mind, open heart, and you will get everything that God has for you. Wow. I want this to be you. I want you to have your own testimony of what God is doing in your life. So come and visit us. Come to this church and watch us online. Go to our website. Go to our social media. And I know your life will never be the same. I want to stay connected with you. Send us a message. Send us an email. We want to stay friends. We want to stay close to you. We want to be a blessing to you. And we want to be a blessing to your family. So let's pray together. Just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying at the cross for me. Thank you for paying for my sins. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. And from this day on, I will never be the same. I am blessed. I'm full of favor and I'm marked by God for greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Guess what? Your life will never be the same. This was the best decision that you ever made. Don't forget to go on our social media, follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook, or visit our website, stay connect with, connected with us. We want to be a blessing to you and your family. We love you, and I'll see you next time. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where it looked like there was no way out? You're not alone. Marked for Life, Not Scarred is an autobiography by Cynthia Demola Oliveira. Sexually molested at a very young age, it took years for Cynthia to overcome that shame and allow God to heal her heart. She has experienced a complete turnaround in her life, and so can you. What the devil meant for evil, God always turns around for good. Written as a page-turning narrative, you will be uplifted and encouraged as you read Cynthia's journey to forgiveness and wholeness. Reading about the grace Cynthia has experienced in her life will help you believe that you can be all that God has made you to be, no matter what obstacles have come your way. Marked for Life, Not Scarred is available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Order your copy today.